and nothing Pastor but Lolo. the truth. Yeah. Talk to us about your journey to ministry. You had this past, now you got focused on the Lord, and yeah. now you are a pastor. That's and this right. people did not know about those other crazy things. But that's okay. You are a metamorphosed man in every sense. So talk to us about that. You joined ministry, you become a pastor. How did that happen? Well, when, when, I, when I gave my heart to Christ that day, September the 2nd, 2001, when I cried out to God and said, Lord, you know what? Save me. And if you would save me, whatever you want me to do, I will do. That's my prayer that day. And so, you know, um, I actually struggled after that two weeks. I struggled to go to SU because I remember the verse that, that said, if you deny me in public, I'll deny you before my father. So I had... <laughs> it's strange, but the Holy Spirit brought that thing to my mind. As I went to fellowship um, that day, and I remember the, 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 the leader, it's called Edgar, he said, someone has just been delivered from a spirit of lust. And I knew that was me, and I was set free. So fast track that, my teachers tell me, now that guy is getting saved because of Kantab. Kantab was like two months out. Um, <laughs> others, no, James is getting saved because of babes. I mean, for some reason, church has all the hottest babes. So, um, and that was also another weakness I didn't mention. But anyway, I'll carry on for that for a bit. So come, in, come, come to um, Essex Vacation. I got involved in the youth ministry here. Oh, under Pastor Mark and Maureen's leadership and we used to do school outreaches and we were here, we did beat on things like beat on, man, those are days <laughs> gone are the days anyway um, it's, it's, it's good old days, it's my turn now and all those things, so I, I was involved in the youth ministry right from my Essex vacation when I joined because one of my passions at that time was God, whatever it takes I want to serve you because I didn't want to go back, so I tried to make sure I was in the house whatever it takes and so I landed in the youth office and that's what happened and, and I got heavily involved in that go to university at the university I remember I, I almost back sleep in my first sem because I met a people <laughs> that lived the life I used to live and that was that's another long story but then I, I came back the Lord brought me back and then I became a I became a zone leader at the university for two years grew the zone bathed it by the time I left, um, I was overseeing UCU, Uganda Christian University, and Chambogu University at the same time. So my journey really started in my involvement to serve in the ministry uh, through the youth ministry. That's where it really began. Now, at the university, it was in my second year. I was sitting in front of my faculty, my faculty on the steps of my faculty, and I was just meditating. And I remember clearly God telling me, he said, James, you will not last in your profession long. And I just thought, uh, okay. And I left it. Got out of university. I, 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 I did IT, IT and computing. So I was, I was also serving in here in the IT office at the same time and all that stuff. I volunteered with the slideshows. And then 2005, I got done, got married. 2006, I was working in the IT department. 2007, I began getting uneasy in my spirit. They actually asked if I could go up to Gulu to be associated to Pastor Joe uh, when he was planting Gulu, and we didn't feel it was the right time. From the time they asked me that question to the, to the next time I walked up to Gary's office and Chris's office, I had no peace, nothing at my workplace, not my workplace, uh, yeah, my desk made sense, no fulfillment, nothing whatsoever, and I kept telling my wife this thing here. And then I remember one day, um, I was praying about this and, and God reminded me, James, do you remember the promise you made to me? Whatever you wanted me to, you wanted, whatever you, I, you wanted, whatever, that promise I made. Um, I don't know how to make it in reported speech, but whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And when he reminded me of that, I knew it was my time to quit. And then my wife tells me something I'd never known. She says, honey, Two years before you asked me to be your wife, God told me you were going to be a pastor. So this is four years. And that's the time I knew my time is up in IT. And I joined the ministry. Pastor Brian, um, now that we talk about power, sex, money. I hope you're tweeting away, by the way. The hashtag is power, sex, money. Keep tweeting away. You are now a powerful man. I hope you know that. Eh? 
you lead a district uh, forget your past you used to you know jump around on this stage you used to be in dance groups three for you then there was what steps of praise uh, you also did uh, a tv show this guy used to be a tv presenter <laughs> on ubc <laughs> as a time it had actually just metamorphosed from utv to ubc wow. no, no, it's okay. uh, it was called soul touch i remember that so there's all that history and now you are a pastor you command influence how do you handle that how do you deal with that power um it's been a journey as well because um getting to that place also began with getting involved in the youth ministry and the youth choirs and then the worship teams uh with the watoto children's choirs and uh th that that was a, about a, a seven year period for me from joining the worship teams to the time i became a pastor and uh, a lot was happening on the inside of me i had to fight some battles in order to do what i do today um I had big self-esteem issues some still crop up today um i, I battle with you know self-esteem and that um and uh, not having a great self-confidence um and so when when it comes to to issues of authority and i have to stand in front of people and speak to people and encourage people and lift up people and teach them um at the same time i'm really do i'm speaking to myself you know as i do that and so it humbles me um i i i i i, I don't want to take any glory i i don't desire to take any glory i quickly understood that you know what don't touch god's glory if you ever want to succeed do not touch god's glory um and and god helps us in our weakness but not to make us look this mighty strong being it's just to remind us that you know what you're just a human being and you can fail and i'm here to help you so uh, uh, this whole leadership aspect for me reminds me of my own inadequacy so even as i step into leadership at whatever level i step into it humbly and with with a lot of um you know caution sometimes i know uh, the first time when i was asked to go to kansanga in uh, 2015 june i remember the first sermon that i preached oh i wish i would have just sung the sermon i i i i, I couldn't say anything i preached i think i was done in 25 minutes and the church was looking at me like this guy is like a fish out of water but uh you know I, it's just that constant reminder i remember going home and telling my wife i don't think i can do this i don't think i'm called to do this and and she reminded me you know it's not about you that's right don't make it about you it's not about you and i just remember god just helping me understand you know what you're human you're weak but i want to help you and so issues of power i try not to get too entangled in I just remember that I'm only here because God has allowed me.